The views expressed on this program are those of the producers and individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Sun Prairie Media Center staff, its video service providers, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Hello and welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit and this week I've got a guest who months ago requested to be on this week, put dibs in for this week's show and I'm so yes. glad she did. Welcome back, Kate Sadler. Hello, I wanted to do Barbie really bad so I begged and I pleaded to do it. You, and here I it's am. a good thing you did because this was the most requested really? week I've had. I won. I feel like everyone who guests is like, who do you have on for this week? It's, it's me. It's Kate. Because I said, I think it was all the way back when like the first trailer came out, I was yeah. like, I want this movie. <laughs> and it worked out. And here we are. Yes. We've got our pink. We've got our pink accoutrement. There we go. Very good. Uh, but first, before we get into Barbie, we are going to get into the other big movie of the week. And I'm going to get us started with Oppenheimer, the newest film from Christopher Nolan. It's the story of theoretical physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer, who is played by Cillian Murphy. He is the man who is tasked with creating the atom bomb during World War II, racing against other countries, putting together the teams of scientists who would make it happen, while also being under constant suspicion for communist ties and possible involvement in communist activities. This also serves as the backdrop for, you know, Christopher Nolan known for his playing with time. And we have three different timelines in this movie that are constantly going back and forth through. Um, and uh, we see Oppenheimer being investigated by a panel to renew his security clearance later in life. A lot of stuff is going on, but uh, 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 the real story is of Oppenheimer, his problems, uh, relationship problems, problems with the communist ties in this McCarthy era. Um, and we also have Robert Downey Jr. as Louis Strauss. Louis Strauss is a man who sits on the Atomic Energy Commission and plays a large role in this movie. But if you're watching this trailer, you see, I mean, it's a who's who of actors. Matt Damon is General Leslie Groves, who is the military man attached to this project, the Manhattan Project, and has to try and compartmentalize all these people. And it's it's a bit of beautiful filmmaking um, and storytelling. I, I There's a lot of parts I enjoy. I like the early portions where Oppenheimer is getting excited about these discoveries he's making and, and all of the excitement of this life. And then we see a later timeline where uh, he's being scapegoated by former friends and allies and, and pilloried by them. Uh, and in between is just a wild story of beautiful filmmaking. And like every Christopher Nolan movie, it's going to look gorgeous. That's never in question. But um, I'm curious what you thought of the Oppenheimer film. Oh, yeah. Okay. So for a bit of background, I did, me and my friends, four of us, went to see this at 8 p.m., and this movie is three hours long. Yes. So I didn't get out until way late. So I was, it was hindered by the fact that I was a little bit tired. Uh-huh. Um, however, I thought it was very, very gorgeous, of course. It, the cinematography was amazing. I loved Cillian Murphy's performance. I also loved Emily Blunt's performance. Yes. I thought she was incredible. Um, it was, um, I'm not the target audience for sure. I did <laughs> learn that. I was like... I did, I, like, I know my history stuff. I've taken plenty of AP history government classes, but it was, there's parts where I was sitting there, I was this like, This is a middle-aged dad story. Yeah, <laughs> going in one year, coming out the other, like, yeah. sure. But I thought it was amazing. I thought um, it was all put together very well. Christopher Nolan is obviously an amazing director and did great on this film. I thought, um, I did giggle a little bit, whenever Josh Peck came on screen. Yeah, yeah. Because Drake and Josh. Right. And then Roderick from Diary of a Wimpy Kid was there, and I thought that was also hilarious. And so, um, are we allowed to give spoilers? Mm, that's key. Mm. Okay, so I'll just say, in a very important part of the movie, Josh Peck does something very important. Yeah. And I, I, like, it's a very, like, you're supposed to take it seriously, but I just, it was hard for me. I was giggling a little bit. <laughs> but then, um, 
Yeah, I did have to take it seriously because then a thing happened. But you you have to see it to find out. So, yeah, I mean, the first two-thirds of the movie are really the building of the tension yes. of are they yeah. going to build this bomb, right? We know the answer to it, but it's mm -hmm. how how they go through it and the tension of the communist relations yes. and all this stuff. And the third hour, I feel like I've been hearing from a lot of people, is where a lot of people's issues come in. Because mm. the third hour seems to be, it's basically just the the Senate confirmation yes. hearing and this panel as they're kind of attacking mm -hmm. Oppenheimer. And, you know, I can understand that for a lot of people that's kind of really boring. Yes. Um, I, I thought that's where Murphy really starred as like this misunderstood genius. Yeah. And he played this duality of a guy who's been, a young guy who's been struggling with visions of this beautiful creation and mass destruction and he has to chase, he has to chase where this mm -hmm. theory will lead him. And then ultimately, is a man who lives with guilt and yes. sorrow about what he created mm -hmm. and just wants to control the weapon yeah. so they never make another one or a bigger one. And that's when they turn, everyone who seems to care yes. for him turns on him. I thought uh, a scene in which President Truman is involved uh, was very good in the fact that I was like, I didn't know I that kinda was sat there, I was like, under the true No, movie. I didn't either. I didn't think about that. And then but like the actual scene itself, I kinda sat there. Like I was I was kinda flabbergasted. And I also going into it, I saw people on like uh social media were like, Oh, this is American like ar like propaganda like to make you side with the government and then I watched it and I was like, I really don't think it is because to me it more showed how much they wanted to use military power and disregarded what Oppenheimer wanted right. to use that. So I felt like it was very much like the opposite of that. Well, like what he but says at one point, he says to General Groves, yeah. you know, he says, you want to use my past yeah. against me. Like you you chose mm -hmm. me not despite of my past, but because of my past, because you can control me because yeah. I have a brother who's a communist and my wife was a drunken communist yeah. and all that. And he's scapegoated eventually by a really petty man. And mm -hmm. I I thought Emily Blunt, you said she was great. great. I thought she was amazing as this woman who, who, she has a rocky marriage and she has to watch her husband with infidelity with Florence Pugh's character, yes. but ultimately is his protector when it matters most. Mm -hmm. Um, I love nearly everything about this movie. Um, it reminded me a lot. I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. This is another middle-aged dad favorite. Uh, but uh, 1984 Best Picture winner oh, Amadeus. Yeah. yeah. This reminded me of Amadeus, of the the tortured genius who is betrayed by someone. His wife, he, he deals with betrayal, but his wife ultimately protects him yeah. when it's time. It kind of reminded me a lot of that. Yeah, I can see where that comes from. Like just the tale of Amadeus itself. Yeah. I have not watched the movie, but I do know my mythology, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, what did you end up giving Oppenheimer? I gave Oppenheimer a 4.5 stars. That's beautiful. I've been going back and forth all week. I've seen this movie <laughs> twice. Oh, wow. I went and saw it opening night, and then I went to see it in the IMAX. And I Whoa. will tell you, the IMAX is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. The IMAX is a great way to see it. It even makes the kind of boring Senate hearing scene. Because it's just like there. Because it's yeah. just so grand. Um, and I've been going back and forth between four and a half and five. And, uh, and if there's a question in my head, I can't give it a five if I doubt anything. Yeah. So I end up giving it a four and a half out of right. five stars as well. And this movie exceeded expectations at the box office. Both oh, of the yeah. movies we were talking about here uh, did gangbusters, broke records I mean, at the box office. they still are. It's crazy. I, yes. Oh, my gosh. But uh, definitely go check out Oppenheimer on the biggest yes. screen. I had a friend yesterday say, I'll probably wait till it comes out on streaming. Oh, I go, no, yeah. no, 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 no. No, no, Not this one. There's m movies you do need to see on in theaters, and yeah. I've learned that throughout my years. Yes. So Very good. All right, mm -hmm. let's move on to the big <laughs> movie of the week. What do we have? We have Barbie, which is a movie I've obviously been looking forward to for so long. Um, and it's about um, Barbie, played by Margot Robbie, who um, realizes that her position within Barbie land is not working like it used to be, and she must go on a journey to the real world and face some existential crises to save Barbie Land and to save her own sanity and find herself. And this cast was also amazing. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we have Margot Robbie as Bobby, Barbie, uh, Ryan Gosling as Ken, and Michael Sarah as Alan, and America Ferreira as Gloria, who is the mom who ultimately helps Barbie in her quest and to save Barbie Land. 
Yes. <laughs> I love yes, her. Yes, as role Weird too. Barbie, yeah. who is extremely funny, and I love her a lot. Um, and it was directed by one of my favorite directors, Greta Gerwig. Yes. And this movie was visually stunning. I thought they made Barbie Land look so real, so good. Like, it was just the colors were on point, the cinematography was on point. Um, and also, Margot Robbie is a great Barbie. She is just, like, she was great casting for yes, the role. She's perfect. Perfect. And I also loved Ryan Gosling as Ken. He was so funny the entire time. Like his performance, I can't give many spoilers, but he was so funny the whole time. And I don't want to spoil much about the main plot because I feel like it's better to leave it as something that kind of subverts your expectations of what you think it is. Mm -hmm. But I will say um, it was a really fun theater experience, first of all, because everyone got dressed up as Barbie or as Ken and went to go see it. So lots of pink when I walked yes. in. And then um, I went in with a very different expectation than what it was actually about, and it, it really connected with me, and I enjoyed it. It was super fun. I think that's the big thing is, I, you know, Greta Gerwig, one of my favorite directors as well, and mm -hmm. she found a tone that I wasn't oh, yeah. expecting in this movie. And uh, it, it's a movie that is both fun and sparkly. I took my 10-year-old daughter to it. <laughs> she loved it, right? So fun. And there's many levels in this mm -hmm. movie, and there's some jokes that went way over her head, mm -hmm. and I'm glad they did. <laughs> Um, but it's fun and sparkly, but it also kind of offers a scathing indictment of the patriarchy yeah. of society. And most surprisingly to me, kind of a somewhat brutal takedown of the role that Barbie has played yeah. in society. And that shocked me that Mattel yeah. was okay it. with it. Because there's moments in here where America Ferreira's daughter at one point really goes yeah. after Barbie. And I'm like, wow, they they were okay with that. Yeah. Because I think because it was done so smartly. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, there's there's a lot in here that was very true, unfortunately. And, you know, they make fun of some of the efforts that Barbie has made in the past to kind of capture the zeitgeist. Yeah. They show some of these failed Barbie creations. Mm -hmm. Like, this was really a Barbie that came out. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not made up for the movie. I, I really enjoyed it. And the, this is p the best marketing I've seen. Oh, my gosh, In yeah. many years. The fact that we are now... Over a week past when it opened, and I was in the theater last night, yeah. and it was packed. Yeah. Sold out shows still a week later, people yeah. still dressing up. And I love the fact that Barbie and Oppenheimer chose to not pit themselves against each other. But everyone but made it come together. See both, yeah. right? Go see both. Yes. And they're promoting each other's, and it paid off. Barbie broke the record for Barbie's largest opening yeah. by a female director. Oppenheimer exceeded expectations. Yeah. I think Barbie has currently, as of like now ish, has grossed over like 500 million yeah, worldwide, it's which amazing. is I have not seen numbers like that in so long, which is crazy, and it makes me happy because I think this will help bring back people going to theaters, which we need personally to me. So I'm very happy about how the marketing worked. It was super fun to see all the press go around and see like, especially Margot Robbie, she'd always pick a Barbie yeah. to have her outfit yep. oh, uh, like after on the red carpet, and it was so cool to see. I just think this whole movie experience as a whole, not even the movie itself, but just like the whole experience that they made for it was just really smart and really fun to see unfold. And I, I don't think we'll see another movie like this in a while, personally. Yeah, it's great because, I mean, uh, Greta Gerwig, I mean, she makes great movies mm -hmm. with strong female characters. Oh, yeah. She's uh, Lady Bird and uh, uh, Little, Little Women. Women. This strong characters that aren't stereotypical, really. And I, I love this, and I love how she kind of played with our expectations and perceptions yes. of Barbie in here. Um, fun songs in here. Oh, yeah. Like you said, the look of Barbie, the look of Barbie land was spot on. Mm -hmm. And like right away in the movie, the, the opening, uh, you know, as they as she describes the perfect yeah. existence and how they float down to mm -hmm. their Corvettes because it's just like you would be played with, yeah. like you would play with a girl. You don't play with the Barbie going down steps. She, you just take she a, exits the side of the house and then she comes yeah. in through because you don't, you would like just like whoosh, her and in there. she's playing stereotypical Barbie. Yeah. Right? And I, I really enjoyed that and it felt like they were really having fun with that. And like you said, Ryan Gosling. He's uh, so A funny. plus performance as well. Um, there's, only, there's one part of the movie one that I just didn't, Every time we returned to it, I kind of rolled my eyes. And it was every time Will Ferrell showed up as the Mattel CEO. See, I, I felt thought like he was, I was silly. I, listen, I was there for Will Ferrell. Yeah? I was there for I him. Just I thought he was funny. I, 
don't know. I understand why you wouldn't, but, like, I thought he was a little silly. <laughs> um, what's been really interesting to me, uh, after having seen this movie, uh, is how quickly the backlash comes out. Oh, it was and, so uh, funny. A lot of fragile male, male egos are being bruised out <laughs> there. A lot of lazy uses mm-hmm. of the word woke out there woke. Woke, that people yeah. don't understand this movie. I saw a tweet that was like, Barbie is a uh, pinnacle of woke male <laughs> hating <laughs> trash. So and I was like, oh, I'm excited to see this even more now. Like, let's go. And it's not. It's actually, it's very indicative of like, if you go and see the movie, it's more about how no one wins under the patriarchy, right. not how like we hate men, um, and that's the whole point of getting rid of the patriarchy. So I, d- it's just very much people who can't. They have very fragile masculinity within them. They were gonna them. hate it before. Yeah, they were gonna hate it like before. didn't even see it, hate it just knowing yeah. about it. Yeah, they're like yeah. Oh. I, I love the message. There's a it lot. Was great. I, I loved. You know, my ten year old daughter took away a message that I really loved. She felt great about it and great mm-hmm. about herself. And you know, there's some there's some worrisome things in here. But you know, hey, real world is tough. Yeah. It's not Barbie Land, but no. what you go through is real. Yes. Um, it felt very connecting to me. I was sitting in there, and everyone was just in pink, and all my friends like got dressed up for it. And then uh, even as I was leaving the theater, I was standing out there like waiting for my friends to come out of the bathroom and. This little girl walks past me and she looks up at me and she goes, you look just like Barbie. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're going to make me cry. I was like, that was so sweet. And it was just such a fun experience. Well, and I got, you know, I got to talking to various people uh, over the last week about it. And what's really cool is that this movie seemed to have brought a lot of people who haven't been to a a movie in the theaters in a long time. Yeah. And reached this audience Mm -hmm. that hasn't been going to a lot of movies recently. Yes, and I'm very happy about that. I think we need to bring back theater viewings. I think we need big theater. Everyone gets dressed up and goes see things. I think it's fun. It's a fun time. Mm -hmm. All right. I ask you, what did you end up giving Barbie for your score? I gave Barbie a five stars because it was perfect. Perfection from Kate. I'm so glad that it didn't disappoint. No, I was so I was so scared that I was gonna walk into that theater and be like, this was not good. But it was so good. It's tough to go in with high expectations yeah. and not be disappointed. Yeah. That's and good. I it's good that I wasn't disappointed. So shout out Greta Gerwig. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, what did I end up giving? I think I gave this movie four out of five stars. Yeah. Hmm. Will Ferrell. Understandable. And I f- I'll be honest, it felt like fifteen minutes too long to me at the end. I felt like That's there was a fair. natural conclusion. Yeah. And then we Went on a little mm. longer. That's just me. But it's a great movie. Another one. See it in theaters. See it. I it's mean, fun. Yeah. It's probably still sold out, so hurry. <laughs> it probably is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move ahead to what we have on our streaming spotlight this week. We turn to Netflix. We have one film. It is a film from director Jewel Taylor. It's called They Cloned Tyrone. Uh, stars John Boyega, Jamie Foxx, and Tiona Paris. Uh, It's a sci-fi thriller that takes place in a neighborhood called The Glen, where something is happening in the shadows. John Boyega is a guy, Fontaine. He's a drug dealer. Uh, Jamie Foxx is Slick Charles. He's a pimp. (laughs) In fact, he was the 1995 International Players Ball Pimp of the Year. Uh, And then you also have, as I said, Tayona Paris, who plays Yo-Yo. She's a sex worker for Slick who is not afraid to give it back to him. Uh, Strange things start to happen in the neighborhood and people start returning from the dead, including a specific white guy with an afro who they see die. And questions are being asked. What if there's something controlling all of this? What if there were people using the residents of the Glen as test subjects for some crazy experiments? Maybe experiments in mind control using... Things such as junk food, hair products, and delicious chicken. Uh, our team kind of goes. The first hour is kind of really comedic. We get to we get to meet these guys, put mm-hmm. this unlikely trio of people together, and then they kind of go out, and it becomes more of a, a mystery. Uh, they're going out, and the more truth that Fontaine finds out, the less he knows about himself and those he trusts. No one is. No one is who they seem, and these kind of these three unlikely partners are trying to get to the bottom of what's happening. Black products are being used against them to control the mass, the masses, and we find out that the man is using the Glen to experiment on these people, and familiar faces keep popping up. The man, played by Kiefer Sutherland, 
who shows up to explain the, his plan for all of the black people in the neighborhood. And there's some nefarious stuff going on, especially when Fontaine runs into someone who looks just like him. Yeah. And luckily, Yo-Yo has got a lot of Nancy Drew skills yes. to try and crack this mystery. I loved her character. And I'll tell you what. I watched this trailer, and it looked. I thought I knew what this was going to be. Mm -hmm. And this movie actually had way more substance to it than I expected oh, it to Oh, I have. thought it was great. I was happy with all the movies this week because they were all really good. And I'm a huge fan of Jordan Peele. And while I'm not comparing the two, I did see a review of this movie that was like, this is like Get Out if it was directed by Donald Glover. And I was like, that's oh, so true. Oh, yeah, I like that, yeah. And I thought it was this one was very fun, but also sci-fi kind of thriller. And I was very into it because I really like sci-fi type horror and thriller. So I love this movie. I thought it was yeah, super Yeah, I was fun. really pleasantly surprised by it. Um, I, I like John Boyega a lot. Um, you know, he's kind of oh, sullen throughout most of this movie. Versus Jamie Foxx's slick, who's big and bombastic, mm -hmm. and almost has the feel of like a. The movie almost has the feel of a 1970s yeah, film. Yeah, that's what I you was know, thinking. He's kind of super fly. There's a great scene where they're eating the chicken though, and John Boyega's character <laughs> starts to crack that yeah. shell a little bit. I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed. Um, I also thought like the whole concept itself was really good, and I thought it showed like exploitation and like systemic racism very well, and but still in like a sci-fi manner because obviously they started using uh, like hair products and yeah. all that kind of stuff that's mostly used in that community yep. to control them. And so it just kind of showed like that, but in a more sci-fi setting, which yeah. was amazing. Fun dialogue, uh, good chemistry, nice blend of comedy mm -hmm. and adventure. Um, and a <laughs> interesting message that the movie kind of ends on that assimilation is better than annihilation yeah. like oh it's terrifying yeah. like whoa but like, <laughs> like also the, maybe a little real that like, is like whoa. the plot of a lot of sci-fi yeah. films um yeah i was very pleasantly surprised by this movie yes um, as a netflix I was, streaming thing i was like i was kind of like mm, because a lot of the a netflix big fan stuff of, John, really. of jamie fox's recent netflix yeah. movies um so that was kind of part of it going i was me. happy to see john boyega finally in another movie again. I yes. feel like I haven't seen him in like forever and I was like, oh, he's back, yeah, yay. I agree, in many ways in this movie, yeah. he's back in many ways. Yes. Uh, all right, what do you end up giving They Cloned Tyrone? I gave it a four stars, very fun, and I hope people watch it. Yeah, I do too, I gave it four stars as well. I enjoyed it a lot, uh, really fun, worth your mm -hmm. worth your time. Well, you know, it's 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 hot out there. Just sit, oh, yeah. sit in the watch AC and watch a movie. This is a good movie, watch <laughs> yeah. it. All right, let's uh, take a moment for a movie throwback. This week I asked you to select a movie I throwback. Did. And you hesitated for I one think, second. I mean, yeah. I got to return immediately on what you wanted to be. I thought for like a second, I was like, I know the movie. And I don't know why, because I haven't even watched it in a while. But I selected Mary Poppins, the original one from 1964. And this has... Um, obviously, Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins, and then Dick Van Dyke as Bert, who's the um, the chimney sweep. The chimney sweep. I forgot the word there for a second. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure everyone and their mothers has watched this movie, so I don't think I need to explain too much. But basically, uh, the Banks family can't find a maid or a nanny for their children, who uh, Mr. Banks thinks are out of control, and their mother is like, well, they're just kids. So he sends <laughs> yeah. out. They try to make an ad for a nanny, he shoves it up the chimney and it reaches Mary Poppins who comes down on her magical umbrella with her um, endless carpet bag yes. of stuff. And she takes the kids on all these different adventures along with Bert and it's just a very fun film and a, a classic. I don't think anyone has not watched this that it's I've talked to. It's a masterpiece, yeah, really. It's great. And the things they did, the, the technical things of mixing the oh, cartoon. Oh, back then, yeah, it was crazy. With live action and all, I mean, all these great movies. And Dick Van Dyke and Julie Andrews, mm -hmm. both. Like, A+, plus, both of yes. them. Like, incredible. Dick Van Dyke with his physical humor. And, I mean, I was reading about this. Walt Disney, till his death, said this was his favorite movie. I can understand why. It's one of my favorites. I, like... As a kid, I was obsessed with Mary Poppins. I've seen the musical. Yeah. I have the books. Like, it great, was serious great for songs. me. Oh, it was I mean, iconic, supercalifragilistic, yeah. all of these. And Julie Andrews has an amazing voice. You know, <sighs> we all know that. Tremendous. And, like, I just love her very much. And this is such a good movie. And I think, I don't know, the remake or the sequel, 
I love, again, I was talking about... Uh, that was the Emily Blunt yeah, one? Yeah, Emily Blunt earlier. And, like, it was good, but yeah. the original one will always be superior. Did you ever see Saving Mr. Banks, the story about the I think author? I've heard of it, but I never got into the... That's a good one. Tom Hanks plays Walt Disney. Okay. Um, Emma Thompson plays the writer of the mm. story, and she doesn't want him to make a movie off her book. Oh, interesting. It's really, huh. really good. And you also find out how the Sherman brothers wrote all the music, because they're working on the music oh, while I see. Walt's trying to get the rights to the story huh. still. It's really good. I didn't know there were so many Mary Poppins yeah, comedies. But, but this one is, I mean, it's mm -hmm. this brings back memories of my childhood, because I probably yeah. watched it when I was three or four, and have watched it many times. And I was very glad when you said, let's see Mary Poppins, I said, I'll throw okay, it on again. Yeah. I would love to watch I'll it again. I'll watch it. I find new things every time exactly. I watch it. Exactly. And it's, yeah, like you said, the technical stuff in it is actually, in like for the 1960s is crazy. Like the animation mix, I always loved. That's probably like, my favorite scenes of the whole film is when they jump into the chalk painting yes. and then they do all their fun stuff. Um, and just like even the special effects of her like on her umbrella and like even the dance scenes are really well shot and really well done, which is not to be expected for a film in that time. Yeah. And it's just so good. Yeah, I love it. I remember in high school uh, doing a chim chim tree <laughs> dance during a yeah. Thing uh, is, yeah. My mom was always used to sing a spoonful of sugar to all of my siblings because we all hated the cough medicine. And she'd yeah, be like, because it's horrible. Here you go. Oh, it's bad. Yeah. But she'd always be like, listen, if you think about the song, then it'll be good. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And it worked? And it worked for the time being. To this yeah. day, she still mm -hmm. has to have. Yeah. And I was actually reading about that, that the way they came up with that was uh, the writer's kid <laughs> said something about that. Like, oh, no, I won't take it. Like, if you pour it on a sugar cube, oh, it was a polio vaccine they had to take. Oh, really? Like, yeah, they put it on a they put it on a sugar cube for me, and they're like, "Let me write a movie." Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Good stuff. But yeah, it's over on Disney Plus right now, among yes. other places. Um, yeah, great. It, yeah, man, classic, amazing, you absolute know. classic. No complaints here. Uh, all right, let's look ahead at some films that may or may not be classics in the future, <laughs> but they are coming out soon, the weekend of August fourth. Uh, we have a few films. First one in theaters, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: I'm Mutant excited Mayhem. For this. Yeah, written by Seth oh Rogen. He also does one of the voices along with John Cena, Jackie Chan, Paul Rudd, among many others. Um, and this is kind of a different animation look for the Ninja Turtles than we've seen in the past. Kind of yeah. more of a Spider Verse it's animation. More, it's definitely very stylized, which I'm happy about. I love the rise of stylized animation recently. Yeah. It makes me so happy. So we don't have the copy and paste 3D models everywhere. Like we can <laughs> have bet. something original, and this is, looks good. Like I'm and excited. And people are not being feeling beholden to the Pixar model of animation too, which everyone tried to copy. Oh yeah. And now we're really branching out, and this looks like a lot of fun, actually. It does, and I like how they actually have the turtles act like teenagers. Like, yeah. I was watching the trailer, and I was like, oh, they feel very teenager -y. Like, yeah. yeah, so I'm very, very excited for this. I rewatched the original one, The Rubber Suit. Yeah. I love that one. The original <laughs> so one's great. Uh, also in theaters, we have The Meg 2, The Trench. It is uh, Jason Statham and friends fighting an even bigger shark this time, and there's multiple big sharks. I think it's all the Kraken in the trailer, maybe. Maybe. I'm a sucker for big shark movies. <laughs> they, they don't have to be I good. I personally don't them. understand the appeal, but like, <laughs> y'all enjoy it. Then. I'm a child of the Jaws generation. Yeah, I know. like being freaked out by <laughs> big shark movies, but these are terrible. Uh, and then we also have Corner Office. John Hamm stars in this office comedy about a straight-laced bureaucrat who discovers a hidden room in his office. This looks kind of fun. Huh. And then over on our streaming platforms, uh, I believe on Netflix, we have the River Wild, a remake of the 1994 Kevin Bacon, Meryl Streep thriller, this time starring Adam Brody and Leighton Meester about danger on the river. I love that original, and we'll see if this one can live up to it. But those are our streaming films. For, of course, before we move any further, we want to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters, The Palace. Feels like everyone I know has been at The Palace in the last week, but we want to thank you for sponsoring this program and showing us these wonderful movies. Kate, thank you for coming of on. Course. I'm so I glad. I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad we got a week of great movies. Yes, I was so happy, and I felt like I was living it at both the Palace Theater and just at my couch watching yeah. movies, but it was a great week for movies. I was so happy about this. So. I love it. I love it. I hope we have you back very soon. You have to choose another oh, movie, sure. though. I'll have to look I in know. the future. Ah. It's tough. All right, next week I'm going to be talking about The Haunted Mansion as well as Talk to Me. Uh, possibly a streaming movie, Happiness for Beginners, and who knows what else, but I'll be joined by 
Jeff Robbins for all that mayhem. So be sure to tune in for all that. Until next week, though, I'm Jameson. I'm Kate. Thanks for watching. Bye.